The 1989 football season marked the beginning of a new era at the University of Cincinnati. New head coach Tim Murphy arrived on the scene and began the process of building the program for the 1990s. Murphy fired up the Bearcats with his intensity and determination. He inspired a squad woefully short on numbers and experience to a come-from-behind tie and a victory in UC's first three games before injuries and the difficult schedule took their toll. Throughout it all, the Bearcats learned what it takes to win and build upon those lessons in establishing a sound foundation for the future of the program. The running back positions were one of the few areas of the team where the Bearcats enjoyed some depth and talent. UC opened the season with a one-two punch of Terry Strong and Joe Abrams at tailback, and they keyed the attack in the early going. The Fleety Abrams sparked a two-touchdown comeback in the fourth quarter to tie Rutgers in the season opener. A gutty, determined runner who twists and dives for that extra yard, Strong was UC's leading ground gainer and a staple of the offense through the first half of the season. Injuries forced a complete overhaul of the ground attack. Abrams was lost for the campaign after the second game due to a hamstring tear, while the punishment he absorbed limited Strong's effectiveness at midseason. That gave rise to Bobby Brown, a redshirt freshman seeing his first college experience. Cameron Williams, a true frosh, also made contributions. Injuries also forced continued shuffling at the fullback spot. Doug Hogue was effective as the starter before he was felled by a knee injury. The Bearcats eventually turned to walk on Timmy Andrews. The Bearcat passing game turned in some major aerial assaults. Don Hogue directed the UC attack through the first four games with his excellent command of the complex Murphy offense. Glenn Farkas succeeded Hogue and provided the added threat of running as well as throwing. One of the biggest challenges facing the UC coaches was rebuilding the receiving core. Nary a letterman returned to the wideout positions. Brian Hatcher quickly established himself as a big play threat. Donnell Hughes was a key target before he was sidelined by a broken leg. Sure-handed Russ Zeely played the role of possession play receiver with his precision routes and big catches. Dave Patania emerged as a steady contributor. Tight ends Chris Cole and Chris Bjorsen complemented the wideout court. Both demonstrated the ability to come up with a big play. Few teams had less experience returning on the offensive line than did Cincinnati. Sophomore John Arena, a guard who was the newest starter on the 1988 blocking front, was the graybeard of the 1989 unit as the lone returning starter. Three sophomores, David Fink, Chris Carmen, and Richard Johnson, and a trio of freshmen, Jim Carmen, Pat Thomason, and Jamie Crisdale, were molded into the blocking front.
Though injuries and inexperience sometimes curtail the Bearcats' effectiveness in moving the ball, fans got a glimpse of the Tim Murphy offensive scheme, a multiple attack featuring big plays and not without surprises. Bearcat defensive play was the team's forte through much of the campaign. Game in, game out, UC defenders would come up with big hits and turn in key plays. A trio of seniors were the main sparks of the Bearcat defense. Nose guard Phil Fourier, linebacker Jack Bruschinelli, and safety Marvin Bowman. Fourier gave new meaning to the term determination with his play on the defensive front. He led the team in tackles for loss, quite an accomplishment for a lineman who is frequently subjected to double-team blocks. Team captain Bruschinelli was a leader by example on the field as well as a fire-it-up guy on the sidelines. He was the team's top tackler for the second straight season, and only an ankle injury prevented him from setting a new record for stops. Bowman was the chief nemesis of enemy quarterbacks when they took to the air. He earned Sports Illustrated's National Defensive Player of the Week honors after keying UC's victory over rival Miami of Ohio. Bowman tied a school record in that game with three interceptions, returning one for a touchdown. And he wants to throw that big skin. He's got a man open. It's going to be intercepted down at about the 40-yard line by Marvin Bowman down to the Miami 30. Down Blanking Poirier on the defensive front were juniors Kyle Stroh and John Thornton. Though perhaps a little undersized as a down lineman, Stroh used his quickness to escape blocks and get to the ball carrier. Thornton attacked the play with his size and strength. Wilson Humphrey and Bill Tatum developed during the course of the season as backups at the tackle spots. Sean Cokes, a walk-on, was a pleasant surprise in the middle. Playing his third defensive position in three years, Vincent Munlin found inside linebacker to his liking when he was paired with Jack Bruschinelli. Munlin became the team's second leading tackler, despite missing games with a knee injury. Ron Trout completed his stellar UC career with a fine season of performances at outside linebacker. He continued to show a knack for getting to the football. A newcomer as a transfer, Doug Bates rounded out the linebacking unit with his steady play at the other outside position. As the lone non-senior, he figures to play an important role in the future. Dan Grimsley proved to be a versatile tool in the linebacking unit, filling in at both the outside and inside positions. Snapping specialist Mick Schell also got a chance to see defensive action. While Bowman attracted a lot of the limelight in the secondary, Scott Powers emerged as a star from his cornerback spot. Powers played just about every defensive play and showed no hesitancy in coming up to stop the run or challenging enemy receivers. <laughs> Kelly Sims and Ronnie Shannon rounded out the secondary with their own fine play. <laughs> when injuries struck that quartet, Jonathan Cockrell and Jackie Cooper emerged as consistent performers. The best news is that all but Bowman and Cooper are sophomores, with bright futures ahead of them. The Bearcat kicking teams were witness to fine performances in 1989 as well. Junior punter Jeff Jones continued to improve. His booming punts helped seal the Rutgers tie, 
and give the defense good field position from which to work. Chad Volland, a true freshman who made the team as a walk-on during preseason practice, stepped right into the breach as the kicking specialist. Demonstrating amazing accuracy with his bare right foot, he had a string of five field goals without a miss and led the team in scoring. One of the best aspects of the 1989 season was a group of athletes who didn't play. The new coaching staff brought 17 players into the program who were redshirted while working hard to prepare themselves academically and athletically for future seasons. While the road into the 1990s will be no less challenging, the future of Bearcat football, thanks to the foundation laid in 1989, is indeed bright. The cats are coming back.